walked through and all the other parades and concerts and everything else. So have a wonderful weekend. So let's go to the announcements. Nope. Okay, so this is pretty much the end of the collection for Love Inc. So if you have any, it's time to get them in and the Bible study and round table continue. I don't know what either one of them is studying right now. Uh, next. Trustees will meet next week. The LaGrange Cemetery will meet on June 4th. And yeah. Oh, you want to say something about that? Yeah. For the masses out there, um, I, yes, I would like anybody coming to the Cemetery Association meeting to let me know about it because I'll be buying refreshments and I'd like a head count. That's it. Okay. Oh, and it's downstairs in the parish hall. Okay. Got it. Next. Okay, scholarship, but you got a little while yet to get in a scholarship application if you know someone who could use it and the barbecue, put that on your plan. And Music Sunday, something dear to my heart. June 16th, our worship service will be all about music. So get your voices tuned up for that one. Let's see, what else? Vacation Bible School in the summer. I think that's about it, except for the yep, church offering. So is there anything else anybody needs to raise up? Okay, then let us begin our worship. <laughs> The spirit who refreshes as the wind and warms as flame. Dwells within, prompting dream and vision. Christ, whose words set the world to rejoicing, whose touch brought the broken to their feet. Still summons to joy and service. Let us sing and praise and worship God in love with the fresh devotion. Our opening hymn is Come Thou Almighty King. decided because it was so empty in here we would fill it with brass.
Please be seated. No, not yet. Not yet. Let us join in the opening prayer. Please be seated. Let us join in the opening prayer. Holy Trinity, you are sacred three, blessed one, eternal God. We pray to you, creator, that we may give forth new life. Christ, that we may be rooted deeply in this life. Spirit, that we may soar beyond possibilities. May your strange and comforting ways be our ways. Amen. We try to avoid too much of that.
God's grace has been with us all this past week. How have you experienced it? It's time to share with the grace jar. Okay, good. Uh, my middle daughter, Annalise, just graduated with her master's in criminal justice, and she has three job possibilities that she is seeking out. Tomorrow she goes to do um, a physical test, and then she has to go do a, a little bit more of a background check in another one, but so she's got three in the works. Amen. <laughs> Following on that theme, we, uh, Darren and I had two graduations on the same day in two different states. Um, I hit Erica's graduation with Avery in Cortland. Darren and his mother flew out to Indiana, Sarah's masters, and then he moved Sarah to Kansas, where she's got a job. Hi. I have always known we have exceptional children in this church. <laughs> Hey. Kansas. So um, this is for my um, sister Joan's surgery. Um, she had her surgery this past week. It went well. I mean, it was difficult, of course, and um, it's still early, but she's doing well. So thank okay. you for all your Good. prayers. Seems like I never come with money. <laughs> um, Thank you. I am just celebrating that the cemetery finally got mowed. I actually got calls from Randy Aldrich saying, when are you gonna do it? <laughs> it was embarrassing. So we'll try to mow it more frequently. Kind of like that tall grass. I don't know, I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> okay, I do have a, a message for you. It's one you, you're going to have to move. Um, I, I, know, I know you don't like the up and down all the time. You can do seated if you want, but this is called the Trinity Stretch, okay? It's just in case you get bored, you know, or any time, or you just, you know, you start thinking, you know, going off on a track, so you want to get yourself back on track. This is a way to get yourself going. So we believe in something called the Trinity, and the word comes from the Latin word trinus, which means triple or three. God is one, the one and only God, but we know God is three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, who is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So in honor of the three ways that we know and love God, we're gonna do the Trinity stretch. From first, we're gonna practice, and if you're next to someone, you might wanna spread out a little bit so that you don't hit them, okay? It's not that violent, okay? So the first thing you have to be able to do is say in the name of the Father, and hug yourself, okay? And then in the name of the sun, we're making a cross with our bodies, okay? And then in the name of the Holy Spirit. Got it? So it works best if you, okay, you understand, you can stand. I, I didn't want to force you to stand. Okay, so. I will say a prayer, and then at the end will be three sentence prayer, okay, triune. And then we will do in the name of the Father, together with the words, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen, okay? So let us pray. We give thanks for the love of the one who made us. We give thanks for the grace of the one who saved us. We give thanks for the peace of the one who keeps us safe. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for joining me in the Trinity Stretch. So now you have an exercise to do <laughs> in your spare time. Okay, first scripture. Marsha, you're up. She's worn out from doing the Trinity Stretch. <laughs> So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But by the, if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. 
For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of God. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the son of man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. On the liturgical calendar today is Trinity Sunday. One of only a couple of special holy days when we celebrate not an event, particularly an event in the life of Jesus, but a doctrine. Does anybody happen to know what the other one is? Can you think of a holy day we celebrate that isn't an event in the life of Jesus? Christ the King Sunday. It's the second one that's a doctrinal Sunday. Today we celebrate the unique triune character of our God. We say that we believe in one God, but we also affirm that we know God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, what we call the Trinity, the name of our church, in fact. The problem is that sounds like three gods, not one God. An ancient creed describes these persons as equal in glory, co-eternal in majesty, almighty, uncreated, and incomprehensible. Dorothy L. Sayers, who's famous for writing mysteries, was also a theologian, and she adds, the whole thing is incomprehensible. <laughs> and it's true. The doctrine of the Trinity has frustrated scholars and confused the faithful. That's because the Bible doesn't lay out the concept of the Trinity clearly. It doesn't define it. In fact, the word Trinity does not appear anywhere in scripture. 
The New Testament speaks about God as Father, as Son, and as Holy Spirit. By the second century, this formulation was used in baptized. We're baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But it sparked controversy. From the earliest times, the three persons of the Trinity were often represented in art, but they were always shown separately. The first time that they seem to have been placed together was in the fourth century, and that representation consisted of the hand, creator God, the lamb, the redeemer Christ, and the dove, the Holy Spirit. It is, in fact, the picture that is on the front of the paper bulletin and was at the very beginning of the PowerPoint on the wall. That image is said no longer to exist. In the year 325, bishops gathered at the Council of Nicaea to consider, among other important matters of the church, the doctrine of the Trinity, because it was controversial. They declared that the Son is of the same essence as the Father, and some decades later, it was agreed by theologians that God is one essence in three equal persons, mutually related. So how then do we begin to understand our three in one, one in three God? Many have tried over the centuries to explain the concept using all sorts of images and metaphors. It's been said that the Trinity is like water which can be a gas, steam, a solid, ice, or a liquid, but is still and always H2O at a molecular level. The Trinity is like an egg with yolk, white, and shell. It's like Neapolitan ice cream, <laughs> vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry all in one ice cream. It's like a triangle of three sides or like a braid a plate of three equal strands smoothly interrelated. The Trinity is like a mathematical equation. One times one times one equals one. The Trinity is like St. Patrick's clover, which you see in the windows this morning. Three leaflets making up one leaf. Or it is like one of the oldest perennial flowers, the pansy, which is on the altar which has three petals that overlap and was even called for a long time, the Trinity flower. Despite our best efforts at explaining the Trinity of full understanding eludes us, even those who are scholars or lifelong Christians. Maybe it's because we've missed the point altogether. The simple truth is that human language is too limited to describe or, dis or define the divine. The human mind is too finite to understand fully the infinite. The metaphysics of the whole thing is simply beyond our ken. So rather than worrying about the nature of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, maybe we should be focusing on the real essence of the Trinity, which is in fact the power of relationships. I know I called this sermon the hand, the lamb, and the dove. It's just because I thought it was very intriguing. But the real title of the sermon is, it's all relative. In Romans 8, Paul doesn't try to work out a systematic theology of the being of God. Paul uses Trinitarian terms interchangeably throughout his writing, spirit, father, Christ, but he's not talking metaphysics. Rather, Paul sees God at work in a uniquely relational way both within God's own nature and with humans. First, Paul admonishes his readers to discern the difference between living in the flesh, which means focusing on the self-oriented, self-centered life, and living in the spirit, which is focusing on the God-oriented, God-centered life. Paul then speaks of relationships. He says that those who live by the Spirit are adopted by the Father as children of God and co-heirs of Christ. Do you see the Trinitarian theme there before your eyes, though not called it? Whatever the Trinity is in being, the purpose of God, who is three in one, one in three, is to bring humans back into relationship with God. 
We don't have to try to figure out the Trinity. We can simply focus on the fact that God's very nature, God's being, God's focus is both internally and externally relational. Our connection with the Trinity, God, Christ, Spirit, isn't an intellectual exercise. It's a heartfelt relationship made real through the Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, Holy Spirit, bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And that's a very different view of God than you can get from any metaphor. In that same fourth century, when the doctrine of the Trinity was established, people were incorporating it into their daily lives. Without speaking any words, they made the sign of the cross on their forehead with three fingers together, this way. The sign was used before all undertakings, upon leaving, entering and leaving a place, before eating, dressing, sleeping, reading, writing, and each new task alerting them to the presence of God in all that they did. There's a tree in Johannesburg, South Africa, that stands in the yard of a Catholic retreat center. When viewed from a particular angle, one sees a singular tree with a very large trunk. From another angle, the tree appears as three distinct trees down to the very roots. The tree was nicknamed Trinity, three in one. The base of the tree became a meeting ground where community was experienced. There and around its trunks, the things of life were discussed. No matter where you leaned on the tree, you were supported. No matter where you gazed upon it, it was beautiful. Three trunks, one tree, inseparable and unified at its base drawing people into fellowship with one another. The existence of this tree is a natural and compelling illustration of the existence of our triune God, a God who operates in community to create community. This is one God, inseparable and unified, who responds to our every need no matter what name you call out, Yahweh, God, Jesus, Christ, Spirit, God will bear you up. No matter where you look, you can see the beauty of what God is doing. God who creates, God who saves, God who empowers, luring us into loving relationship with God's self and with one another. The doctrine of the Trinity reveals that relationships stand at the heart of the universe. Atoms do not exist unless they are in relationship with other atoms. You and I do not exist unless in relationship with others. Even God exists in relationship. I don't know how many of you have ever wondered, but in the book of Genesis, way before anyone thought Trinitarian at all, God is creating and God says, let us make man in our image. In the image of God, let us make man. And many people have spent decades wondering, us? <laughs> it's the Trinity, before the Trinity was even created. It is in relationships that we can perhaps begin to incarnate the character of God, Christ, and Holy Spirit into our lives. John of Damascus, one of the early church fathers who lived during the late seventh, early eighth centuries, rejected all the normal definitions and metaphors about the Trinity and came up with a wholly different term for the oneness and threeness of God, perichoresis. Perichoresis is a Greek word which loosely translated means circle dance. In other words, the Trinity is not primarily defined by the distinctiveness or unity or substance of the persons involved, but rather as a circle, a circle defined by love. To see one is to see all. To dance with one is to dance with all. 
being invited into this circle and into a love relationship where we see God face to face as children hold hands and dance with loving parents. Circles are natural, appearing everywhere from the sun and moon to the earth itself. Makes sense then that we should be thinking of a circle as the dominant paradigm that shapes our understanding of God's creative and relational nature. You can't define a circle by its points. You can only define it as a whole. So Trinity Sunday is something to celebrate because it's not really about defining the nature of the doctrine of the Trinity. It's about being in relationship with the God who created and cherishes us, who redeemed and loves us, who sustains and holds us dear. It's about how God draws us into loving relationship with God's self and with one another. We celebrate this relationship every time we gather to worship. And the truth is we'll probably never understand the Trinity by trying to define it. The only way we will really get it is to join the circle and live into that relationship. Amen. John Bell, I believe this is a John Bell. Oh, no, it isn't. It's Richard Leach. At any rate, this is a hymn. I thought it was by John Bell, but it isn't. It's by Richard Leach. Um, and this is a hymn called Come Join the Dance of Trinity. And it is Turkey talking about the circle dance, the perichoresis that we just talked about. So let us rise and sing. It's on the insert. The words will be up here. And if you have a green book, you can find it at 3017.
I'm sorry, do not be seated. We are to do the Apostles' Creed. I completely forgot. Let us rise and say the Apostles' Creed, followed by the Gloria Patri. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father. Now you may be seated. So do you have any concerns that you should share before we are in prayer? Yes, Kim. So as we were sitting here, I got a text from my childhood friend, Laura. We've been friends forever. She lives in Raleigh. We're very close, but she just texted me to say, hey, I just wanted you to know I'm at the hospital. My legs aren't working um i don't know what's going on with her but i just said i'm in church we're gonna say a prayer for you okay so, uh, absolutely i don't know what's happening but <laughs> i'm scared mm, that's scary mm. uh, prayers for the uh, man who um what was on our road and he had a bad accident with a chainsaw um Ooh. and it, crushed two bones in his arm and a lot of flesh damage too, um, but prayers that he regains the use of his arm and his hand. Things are looking iffy, but pray that he can recover. Those things scare me. Let us be in prayer. God, the mystery and the majesty of your very nature call us to think deeply about ways we experience you in creation, in history, and in our lives. On this special Sunday, we rejoice in how you have made yourself known to us. We give thanks that we can come to you as our creator, giver of every good and perfect gift. We praise you for the revelation of yourself in Jesus of Nazareth. We are grateful and glad for the experience of you as spirit, giving us counsel, comfort, and strength. We offer our prayers, knowing that we are your children and heirs. We pray for the world that through the reconciling love of Christ, our destructive and violent ways may cease as you bless your human family with peace. We pray for the mission of your church that empowered by your spirit, we may proclaim the good news in the world you so dearly love. We pray for your creation, that as it groans for its redemption, we may care for its well being through the power of your life giving spirit. We pray for all who are ill or suffer, especially those whom we have named, either out loud or in the silence of our hearts that they may find the healing offered to the world in the work and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We pray for ourselves. Awaken us to your threefold presence in the world this day, that we may have life and have it abundantly with you in Christ and through the Holy Spirit. And hear us as we pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us make our gifts to God. Let's join together in the prayer of dedication. Great and eternal God, you are the one who creates and liberates us, the one who completes and perfects us, the one who comforts and sustains us. In deepest gratitude for your presence, love, and grace, we offer ourselves and our gifts. May our offerings and our lives be strengthened by your spirit and further the ministries of your church through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is Maker in Whom We Live.
May God's love go before you, Christ's blessing be around you, and the Spirit's joy within you. Go in peace. Amen. Let us first form our circle and sing our closing song. Um, yeah, yeah I, th I think we're going to have to shrink in a little bit. Okay. We can do this. Somebody's got to get in that next. There, you there go. we go. There you go. You got it. Okay. <laughs> An amoeba, okay. <laughs> God be with you till we meet again. For his counsel's guide uphold you. With his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Amen. Don't move. From my perspective, you are a heart. We are a heart. Laura, you are the point. And you are the point. Yeah. Very nice. Amen. <laughs> Good morning, Stella. Good job. Good morning. How are you this morning? <coughs> Good morning, Anne. Bring me 